Welcome to Gilead Lutheran Church. As usual, a few announcements. Um, in the back, on the table, by the military tree, is a little container that has tabs from soda cans, uh, cat food cans, tuna cans, whatever. We're collecting those for Ronald McDonald House. I know in the past I've kind of forgotten to mention it for a few Sundays. But if we continue that program, I usually take those when I take the bottles back because they go to the same place. Prayer list. The prayer list that we are currently using will end at the end of this month. If you have people that you still want to have on that list, please contact Pastor or myself. There's a flyer on the back table we've discussed a couple of times. Anyone that might be interested in going on a New England, Canada cruise next year, July, out of Boston, there's a flyer back there. Please contact Darlene or myself if you're interested. I know it's only July, but it's time to mark your calendars, folks, because Chicken barbecue seems a long way away, but September 9th comes quickly. Mark your calendar so we can kind of get an idea of who's coming. You don't have to tell us, but at least to remind yourself. Are there wow. any? Oh, chicken barbecue, I thought I said, did I not? Sorry. I thought I did too. Are there any other announcements? One possibly to step and think of this morning's psalm. We will begin at verse 9 through the end, and we will sing it all together. We will not alternate like we have been doing. Any other announcements? Enjoy your worship.
We join together with a brief order of confession and forgiveness found on page 77 in the front of your green hymnals. I invite you to find that and rise as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we're in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now share that as you feel comfortable. Our opening hymn is number 546, When Morning Gills the Skies.
page 78 in the front of your green hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also in peace, let us pray to the Lord.
so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Here ends the reading. The Psalm 65, beginning at verse 9, and will be sung in unison. Some seeds fell on the path, 
And the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on the good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what is sown in the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. And what was sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. <laughs> view 
of the individual seed, the chance of survival and growth for that individual seed is pretty much luck of the draw. The seed lands where it lands. And if it isn't eaten up by birds, it will do its best to grow up to its God-given potential. Now there's some mystery in this as well. I am a gardener, and I start a lot of my own plants, and then I transplant them into my plots in the community garden in Scotia, where I live. Now in a community garden, there is not a lot of space, so each plant is very important. Now this year, my kale plants look beautiful, they're producing abundantly, except for one spindly little plant. Same packet of seeds, same care, same location, but not the same result. Why? Who knows? It's a mystery. Now Jesus in the parable mentions, mentions some more obvious reasons for failure to thrive. Seeds that fall on the compacted path, they get eaten up. Seeds trying to grow among rocks can't root. Seeds in the thorns are outcompeted. For all of those seeds, it's just not going to go well. And then you have the lucky seeds that land in a good soil and get to grow and produce abundantly. And Jesus, when he explains the parable, likens seeds to people who hear the word of God. Those on the path hear without understanding. Those among the rocks are like those for whom the, the word is not rooted and soon fall away. The seedlings among the thorns are like those whose worries and cares of the world sap the power of God's word in their lives. And then there are those who are like the seeds who landed on the good soil and produce an abundant harvest for the kingdom. So we have lucky seeds and unlucky seeds. You've got lucky people and unlucky people. And if we were to end up here, if we were to stop our thinking on this parable right here, we'd be stuck in a kind of fatalism. If we stop here, I could end with good luck to you. Amen. But the thing is, as I think about my faith in my life, look back, I've been all of those seeds. And even today, sometimes I'm more than one of those seeds in any given day. Now we all know that seeds can't till hard ground. We know that seeds cannot remove rocks. We know that seeds cannot dig out thorns. But we can. Now as a Gardener, I don't just go to my plots in that community garden and just dump the seeds out. First, I prepare the ground. I start by removing the overwintering weeds and the leftover plant residue from last year. And then I work compost into the soil. And then I dig the ground all up so it's nice and loose. And then it's ready for my seeds and my transplants. Even for our sower in biblical times, planting a field with a sack of seeds, he would have prepared the soil. To do otherwise would just be pure foolishness. You know, there's an old story about a preacher who's visiting a parishioner's farm and complimented the farmer, saying, This is a mighty fine farm that you and the Lord have made. And the farmer said, Yes, it is, Pastor. But you should have seen it when the Lord had it all to himself. So how can we work together with the Lord to prepare the soil? When there's a lack of understanding, like the seeds on the path, we can create a climate in which we can study the Bible for understanding without fear of judgment. We can admit when something baffles us and we can listen to others who may have some insight that we're just lacking. When we find ourselves among the rocks dealing with trouble in our lives, unable to take root, well, we can be a community that supports and helps one another and our neighbors through difficult times. 
When we find ourselves amidst the thorns, we can remind ourselves and remind one another that we don't have to be busy every single minute. We can learn to, we can help each other to learn to take some downtime and to relax with our God. And we can learn to and help others learn to find little Sabbath moments even in the midst of their busy lives. And when we've done all that prep work, well then we can count on God to do the rest. Just like the sower of the field will do. God will send the rain. God will provide the sun and give the seeds the spark of life that they need to grow into their full potential. As Isaiah reminded us in that first reading, the same God who sends the rain to water the crops and cause growth before that water returns to the sky also promises that God's word will do likewise. God's word will go out and accomplish its purpose. It shall not return to me empty, says the Lord through the prophet. It shall accomplish as that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. And moreover, that same thing will happen for us God's people. We will go out in joy and be led back in peace. And even the mountains and the hills and the trees of creation will join us in praise to our God. For we will be in concert with the Lord, working with the Lord in building up the kingdom and growing to all of our God-given potential. All of this to the glory of God. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our sermon hymn, our hymn of the day, is number 261 on what has now been sown. He descended into hell. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. Uh, you can follow along in, in the Celebrate insert on the back page. We follow it fairly closely. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Guide your church, O oh God, to sow seeds of forgiveness and righteousness on good soil. Direct your people to proclaim your love in this congregation and throughout the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Sustain your creation, O oh God, by sending favorable weather causing trees and fields to grow, protecting waterways from pollution, and instilling in all people the need to be good stewards. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Maintain peace among all people, O God, and raise up lawyers who work for justice in the courts, advocates to speak for the downtrodden, and politicians to work on behalf of the common good. Hear us, O God. Heal those who are sick, O oh God, and we lift up those on our prayer list and others, including John, Mike, Matthew, Bob, June, Rick, Elaine, Marcy, David, Charlene, David, Carol, Joe, David, Marion, Lillian, Cindy, and those others we name before you with our hearts or with our lips. Guide healthcare workers to care for those who suffer, scientists to conduct life-saving research, and counselors to care for the victims of sexual abuse and exploitation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Answer the prayers of those gathered in worship, O God. Protect those who travel near and far. Accompany visitors to this congregation and nurture our faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord, we especially pray that you protect all those impacted by floods, excessive heat, uh, storms, fire. We ask, Lord, that you bring healing and restoration. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Inspire us by the faithful departed, O God, examples of your embodied love, whose confidence in the resurrection guides us in living lives worthy of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. Our service continues with the offering as we glorify God through our giving and through those gifts support the work of the church here and throughout the world.
we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you.
and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Thank you.